Bewildering Emotions by James Whitcomb Riley The merriment that followed was subdued, as though the storyteller's attitude were dual, in a sense, appealing quite as much to sorrow as to mere delight, according, haply, to the listeners bent either of sad or merry temperament. And of your two appeals I much prefer the pathos, said, the noted. Traveler, for should I live to twice my present years, I know I could not quite forget the tears that child eyes bleed, the little palms nailed wide, and quivering soul and body crucified. But, bless em, there are no such children here tonight, thank God. Come here to me, my dear, he said to little Alex, in a tone so winning that the sound of it alone had drawn a child more lothful to his knee. And, now sir, I'll agree if you'll agree, you tell us all a story, and then I will tell one, but I can't. Well, can't you try? Yes, mister, he can tell one. Alex, tell the one, you know, at you made up so well, about the bear. He, Luz tells that one, said Bud, he gets it mixed some bout the gun and, axe the little boy had, and, apples, too. Then Uncle Mart said, there, now, that'll do, let Alex tell his story his own way. And Alex, prompted thus, without delay began. 